Hi! In this video, we are going to show our final presentation on the PVL. We have had many things to investigate. In the end, we will give our conclusion. To start our project, we have to clarify some things. For example, what is a bad t-shirt and what is a good one? We found some characteristics of a bad t-shirt. For example, bad t-shirts show the failures of the students exposing students from their mistakes or failures in front of their classmates is ridiculing them and with this you will make the student withdraw and not be encouraged to continue participating in class bad teachers scare the student who is wrong mistakes are fundamental in the learning process and teachers who punish or judge their students when they make mistakes will cause fear and will not correct them to expose their knowledge anymore which will lead them to keep many dupes and wrong concepts but teachers only evaluate the final result but teachers also give importance to the final result of the test of the students but they don't stop to evaluate if they have tried to improve through activities such as class participation or any type of attitude and the student has taken to improve their performance. Bad teachers blame students for poor results. In a certain test, 90% of the class did poorly, but the teacher insists that this is due to the lack of interest in the subject by the students, never evaluating the role or their responsibility in this. Teachers don't dare to innovate. The new information and communication technologies and everything that has to do with the educational possibilities offered by the internet and not waiting the scope or resource to be considered among for teachers. They prefer not to trust the device and they lose and force students to lose all the possibilities and resources that the internet offers. We also found some characteristic of a good t-shirt. For example, the t-shirt is flexible. Flexibility implies that in a special situation or problem, you are able to make changes in the lessons or activities in the moment. You must be able to change if half the students don't understand a concept, you can go on without finding a better explanation for them to understand. The teacher worries. You must do your best to ensure that all students are successful. You must know their personalities, component power to connect individually and interest, and cooperate those with each. The teacher is creative. A good teacher must be able to create lessons that attract the attention of their students and encourage them to continue coming to class. Unique, captivity and dynamic lessons always have a good effect in classes. And the last one characteristic is the teacher is empathetic. A good educator must be able to recognize and empathize with the struggles of the students, even though they may not relate personally to them. Try to put yourself in your students' shoes and see things from their perspective. It is often essential to help the students succeed. The main question of the project is, why some teachers don't have a vocation for teaching and what can we do about it? Being future teachers, we have noticed that some of the teachers we have had haven't given us their best image, which leads us to think that they have no vocation. To answer this principal question, each one of the members asks a series of questions that could help us to answer. These are the questions that I ask. One, does methodology influence the teacher's vocation? Two, how do teachers act when they see that their method doesn't work with the students? And three, three today, what does leads recent high school graduates to study to be teachers? 
As a result of this question, I found that the respondents, both teachers and students, and I agreed on the first two questions, answers, emphasizing that the methodology influenced the vocation of the teacher, and there are both good and bad teachers who act differently. The good one that looks for alternatives and exhausts or creates resources, and the bad one that no matter how hard he tried, as he is not his interest, it will not work. In the last question, we all have different perception that it could be what motivates a recently graduate student to be a teacher, but in short, together with what the response says, we could do three reasons. The first referred to seeing a talent born in this work, either by experience or, or by pleasure. The second is to want to contribute something to society, thanks to the knowledge gained from this profession. And the last is the motivation that comes purely from stability, whether economic or social. These are my questions. One, what aspects make a teacher have a vocation to each? Two, how does a teacher acquire his vocation to each? And three, what role do students play in the teacher's vocation when teaching? Well, with the collated information, it was possible to demonstrate the vocation with teachers are born to each and the good qualities that they have at the time of teaching thanks to their vocation, qualities that are planning for the benefit and wellness of all students, so they are the leading role in the daily life of any teacher. I totally agree with that information because as a student and future teacher, I consider that information is totally correct because it's too similar with my thoughts. These are my questions. First, how does it influence the interpersonal relationships between teacher and students when teaching? Second, how can we apply different strategies of teaching if we're beginner teachers? And three, do you think that age is an important variable in a teaching environment? Information obtained with the interviews gives a common idea from teachers and students. Regarding interpersonal relationships in the classroom, it is known that if these relationships are healthy and there is a good communication, the work of teaching will become more enjoyable and the students will also be more willing to learn. As a student, I agree with that statement and I think that it should be taken into account by many teachers who perhaps are failing in their methodology and or way of teaching. Get these questions. 1. How can you know a teacher has vocation? 2. Where's the inspiration to be a teacher from? And 3. How can a teacher without vocation influence in a student's lives? With all the answers from teachers and students, I can conclude we are all agree that teachers need vocation to be good role models and let great impressions in their students for present and future situations. Some teachers can influence in a bad way in a student's lives. Those teachers without vocation can make a student lose their desire in the subject, thinking that it's boring or exhausting. Students don't need a teacher as a friend, just a little more passion when they are teaching something. To answer the principal question, the reason we found about teachers don't have vocation is that the most of them are not working as teachers because they want to, but for other reasons, as a tradition, an obligation, or just a salary. Analyzing the situation, these are not good reasons to work in a career that needs passion. 
So it turns out that they don't like what they are doing and they don't have vacation. There are two different types of teachers all over the world. There are some good teachers that are giving everything for their students to learn every day. But there are also some teachers that are meant to be it and can be a problem in a student's learning improvement. Education needs people willing to form better future. We also think about new strategies to introduce in our future classes since we know students have new requirements and we have to be prepared for future situations can appear. One of them is showing interest in a student's current situation, not losing our authority, becoming a friend, but getting interested about how can a student improve or the reason they can get concentrated in class.